Hello, folks and goats. Welcome to the Command Valley. My name is Griffin, coming to you with another deck tech. Before I get started on this video, I just want to remind you guys to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications of every video that comes out on our channel. We really appreciate it. It helps us out, and it's a good way to show your support for our channel. I also wanted to mention the Duel of the Peak series, which is our gameplay series that features all four of us here at the Command Valley battling it out that you can watch right now on our YouTube channel. And without further ado, today I am coming at you with the Scorpion God. The Scorpion God is three black red for a 6-5 legendary creature god. Whenever a creature with a minus one minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. And for one black red, put a minus one minus one counter on another target creature. And then the last bit of text has the classic Hour of Devastation God text, which reads when the Scorpion God dies, return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So a lot of really cool things on this card. My favorite thing about the Scorpion God is probably that it has card draw just stapled right onto it. And the fact that it can protect itself by just returning to your hand, which means you don't have to pay that commander tax. Exceptionally helpful in commander. All right, so let's jump into it. The Scorpion God is very focused around putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures and then be able to take advantage of his text that reads when a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. So the goal of this deck is to draw a ton of cards, get a lot of value over just taking out people's creatures and then basically just controlling the board while you draw into your winning plays or win conditions. So the first section that I wanted to go over is the minus one, minus one counter section. How are we gonna put minus one, minus one counters on people's creatures and help them die quicker? First off, we've got Corrosive Mentor, two and a black for a one, three creature with black creatures you control have Wither. Now I wanted to spend a minute to just say what Wither is. Wither is essentially a replacement effect when they deal damage. Instead of dealing damage directly, it deals the damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters, which obviously in this deck is extremely effective because when we kill people's creatures, they're gonna have minus one, minus one counters on them. And when they die, Scorpion God will trigger and draw us a card. So we have a lot of cards in this deck that have Wither, that give our creatures Wither or give other creatures Wither just to take advantage of those minus one, minus one counters. And obviously we have Fallen Ferromancer, which is three in red for a one, one with Infect. Infect is another keyword that allows us to put minus one, minus one counters on creatures, again, taking advantage of Scorpion God's text. You can also pay one generic and one red, tap it, it deals one damage to target creature or player. So you can just effectively just put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature, either before it dies or to take out a creature with one toughness and be able to draw a card off the Scorpion God. We have Harbringer of Night, which is two black black for a two three summon spirit. During your upkeep, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature. These cards are extremely effective in this deck because they essentially put a target on every single thing on the board saying if anything dies, you're gonna get a draw card. Especially if there's a board wipe, that means you're gonna get a draw card off of each creature that has a plus one plus one counter on it as long as Scorpion God is on the battlefield. Soul Snuffers, when it enters play, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature. So kind of like Harbringer of Night, except a one off effect. We have Colrath Knight, which is three black red hybrid, black red hybrid, flying three three with wither, and creatures your opponents control with counters on them can't attack or block. This card is extremely useful because it basically just tacks on some extra advantage by putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures, stopping them from attacking and from blocking, which is gonna help us get through with our creatures to maybe get some more damage in. Carnifex Demon, which is four black black for a six six demon. Flying Carnifex Demon enters the battlefield with two minus one minus one counters on it. And for one black, remove a minus one minus one counter from Carnifex Demon and put a minus one minus one counter on each other creature. So this is a similar effect to Soul Snuffers and Harbinger of Night, where we're just essentially targeting everything on the battlefield with a minus one minus one counter. Make sure that when anything dies, we're getting the advantage off of it. Midnight Banshee three black 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 for a five five spirit with wither and at the beginning of your upkeep put a minus one minus one counter on each non-black creature so again similar to harbinger of night black sun zenith which is black black x for put x minus one minus one counters on each creature shuffle black sun zenith into its owner's library now this is extremely useful because it not only is it a board wipe it can also read just draw 10 cards draw five cards draw 15 cards depending on how many creatures you take out and the ones that live will still have that target on their back, letting you draw a card when they die. 
Splendid Agony, which is two and a black for an instant distribute two minus one minus one counters among one or two target creatures. This just allows us to be able to, at instant speed, just put a minus one minus one counter on some creatures before they die, allowing us to draw some cards. Next we have Incremental Blight for three black black, a sorcery, put a minus one minus one counter on a target creature, two minus one minus one counters on another target creature, and three minus one minus one counters on a third target creature. Liliana's Influence, which is a sorcery for four black black, put a minus one minus one counter on each creature you don't control, and then it has the text that you can search our library for Liliana death wheel to reveal it and put it into your hand however this card may not be very good in other decks but in this deck it is exceptionally useful being able to put minus one minus one counters on each creature that's exactly what we want we want everybody to have those minus one minus one counters and even if we don't have Liliana death wielder in our deck this card is exceptionally useful Second to last, we've got Contagion Engine, which is an artifact for six mana. When it enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. And then for four and tap it, you proliferate, then proliferate again, allowing us to just double the counters on creatures, killing them quicker, maybe holding some people back. Could really affect one person on the board. So be careful when you use this card, not make anybody angry. And then we have Everlasting Torment, which is a enchantment for two and a black red hybrid. Players can't gain life, damage can't be prevented, and all damage is dealt as though its source had wither. This card is amazing in this deck. Normally what happens is I'll drop this enchantment and people just stop attacking because they know if they start attacking, giving minus one, minus one counter, then I'm gonna get to draw more cards. And then Scorpion God, I'll allude to this a little bit later, but you draw a massive amount of cards. That's a quick summary of all of our minus one, minus one counter enablers. Now, obviously there are some cards in here that seem pretty lackluster. Splendid Agony only puts a minus one, minus one counter on up to two creatures. But in this deck, since we're so focused on the text on Scorpion God, that means putting a minus one, minus one counter on anything essentially just says when this creature dies, you get to draw a card. So we have tons of ways in this deck of being able to put minus one, minus one counters on one, two, all creatures, killing all creatures, removing creatures. We're really trying to stall the board out because we're not going to be able to keep up as a Rakdos deck with massive creature decks, but we're going to be able to stall the board and control it until we draw into our later pieces that allow us to win. Moving on to our next category that allows us to be able to use those minus one, minus one counters even more effectively, we'll move on to the next step, which is let's abuse it. First off, we have Young Peasy for one and a red, a two, one human shaman. When have you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a one, one elemental creature token. We have Varchild Betrayer of Keldor, who is two and a red for a three, three legendary creature human knight. Whenever Varchild Betrayer of Keldor deals combat damage to a player, that player creates that many one, one red survivor creature tokens. Survivors your opponent's control can't block, and they can't attack you or a planeswalker you control. And when Var Child leaves the battlefield, gain control of all survivors. Ogre Slow Lord for three black black. We have a three three Ogre Rogue. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may put a one one black rat creature token onto the battlefield, and rats you control have death touch. Endric Sar, Master Breeder for four and a black. Whenever you cast a creature spell, put X one one black Thrall creature tokens onto the battlefield, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. And when you control seven or more Thralls, sacrifice Endric Sar. Grave Titan for four black black, a six six creature giant with death touch. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, put two 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 black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. Ophiomancer for two and a black. We have a two two creature human shaman at the beginning of each upkeep. If you control no snakes, put a one one black snake creature token with death touch onto the battlefield. All of these creatures are enabling our strategy without counting on our opponents to cast creatures. So even if our opponents are not casting creature heavy strategies or playing spell slinger decks, then we can make sure that we can take advantage of Scorpion God's text by just playing our own creatures and being able to get so many one ones and small creatures to be able to put our minus one minus one counters on. The reason why there are so many ways of getting one ones onto the battlefield battlefield is because if we only need to put one minus one minus one counter on it for it to die that means as soon as we play something like midnight banshee or harbinger of souls then we're going to be able to wipe out every single one one and put and draw just a ton of cards and gain that and gain a ton of advantage from it so continuing on we have nest of scarabs which is an enchantment for two and a black whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature create that many one one black insect creature tokens this card is amazing in this deck this essentially just means put a minus one minus one counter on a creature it dies create a one one black insect creature token put a minus one minus one counter on it and then it dies draw a card continue making one you can just get into these massive loops next up we have blood gas for a black black we have a two one vampire spirit blood cast can't block blood gas has haste as long as an opponent has 10 or less life and whenever land enters the battlefield under your control you may return blood cast from your graveyard to the battlefield again just another creature that we can use to put minus one minus one counters on to have it die put a land bring it back keep drawing those cards off of it and just gain that advantage 
Similar to that, we have Reassembling Skeleton. For one generic and one black, we have a 1-1 one, one Skeleton Warrior. And for one generic and one black, we can return it to the battlefield tapped. Right of the Raging Storm, that is an enchantment for three red red. Creatures named Lightning Rager can't attack you or Planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player creates a 5-1 red elemental creature token named Lightning Rager. It has Trample, Haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice this creature. This card is kind of a two-in-one package. It allows us to be able to incentivize our opponents to attack other people, bring other people's life totals down, and it also lets us be able to have these options of putting minus one, minus one counters on these Lightning Ragers, since they're only five ones, just kill them immediately after they've attacked. And then lastly, we have Micaeus the Unhollowed. For three black, 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 we have a five, five legendary creature zombie cleric with Intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it, and other non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Undying. Micaeus is really unique because in the way that minus one, minus one counters and plus one, plus one counters work, is that if something has a plus one, plus one counter and you give it a minus one, minus one counter, they cancel each other out. So if you take out a creature and it comes back with a plus one plus one counter, you can give it a minus one minus one counter and when it dies again, it will come back. This makes Micaeus and his undying ability extremely useful in being able to bring back our creatures repeatedly. And of course the all-star in this deck, one of my favorite cards in here, Necroskitter. For one black black, we have a one four creature elemental with wither and whenever a creature an opponent controls with a minus one minus one counter on it dies, you may return that card to the battlefield under your control. And I just wanted to add that we do have Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat in here on our Aristocrats cards to just be able to take advantage of all of the cards that are dying, all the creatures that are dying to just really propel us into the future. And we do have a little bit of a combo in here I'll mention at the end of the video that requires either a Blood Artist or a Zulaport Cutthroat. Moving on, I wanted to talk about the card draw and I wanted to talk about why I don't have any card draw on this deck. And you might be wondering like, oh, wait, stop. Griff, you don't have any card draw on this deck? Let me tell you the reason why. If we go back to Scorpion God, I just want to reiterate how important his text is. Whenever a creature with a minus one, minus one counter on it dies, draw a card. I have not added any card draw into this deck, and I have never had a problem with it. Majority of the time with Scorpion God, I am discarding to hand size every single turn because there are so many ways of being able to get rid of people. Because there are so many ways of being able to get rid of people's creatures with minus one, minus one counters that we're just drawing into so many other ways of being able to do it and continue that strategy. So although I, yes, card draw is extremely important, I just want you to know that the Scorpion God is the card draw in this deck. And that means we can pay more attention to other things in our deck and still keeping up with a full hand. All right, correctly, I just want to move on to the mana ramp in this deck. We have Black Market, which is an enchantment that whenever a creature dies, you put a charge counter on Black Market, and then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on Black Market. Ash Nod's Altar allows us to sacrifice creatures for two generic. We have Soul Ring, Rakdos Signet, Dowsing Dagger, which can transform into a Gilded Lotus, Azor's Gateway, which is a little bit of card draw, but also can turn and flip into a land that gives us mana equal to our life total. Married Landscape and then Thran Dynamo. We're just plowing through here, moving on to our interaction. This deck is one of the most interactive decks that I've ever played. The mo Most of this deck is just made up of interaction. Because we have so many ways of putting minus one, minus one counters on creatures, we have a lot of ways of taking out creatures. We have a lot of ways of bringing our creatures back. There is a lot of fun with this deck with the interaction. So just real quickly, we have Vandal Blast, which can take out all the artifacts that might be pesky. Dreadborn Terminate, which are spot removal cards, along with Bedevil. Lethal Sting, which can destroy a creature while also putting a minus one, minus one counter on one of our creatures, which is just another two in one package. Puncture Blast, which is essentially a lightning bolt, but it has Wither, so it can quickly take out a creature, or maybe just add some minus one, minus one counters on creatures before it dies. And then finally, we have the board wipes, in which I will say there are more than usual because we really want to control this board and be able to just wipe out everything that has a minus one, minus one counter on it. We're going to have a little bit more board wipes than normal. So we have Vonus Hunger, Toxic Deluge, Blasphemous Act, Crux of Fate, and Decree of Pain. Almost done. We have our protection. Undying Evil, which is one black for an instant. Target creature gains Undying until end of turn, which can save either Scorpion God or some other of our really important creatures. Sudden Spoiling, which is one black black for an instant with split second. Until end of turn, creatures target player controls lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 0-2. This can come in real handy, maybe save us in a, a nice tough spot, or we can use this to turn one of our opponent's creatures into 0-2s and then just take them out with just some kind of Contagion Engine or Harboring of Souls effect. 
Now this next card, you do not have to play this card. I played this card simply because with all this serene interaction, I really started missing out on blue. Blue holds a very special place in my heart and most of my decks have blue. And I really try hard to make sure that there's some respect, maybe that's the right word, respect to blue in all of my decks. So I am playing this terrible instant that allows us to pay three life and counter a target creature spell. Victimize, which allows us to bring back our creatures by just sacrificing one of our other creatures, and Thrilling Encore, which is an instant for four and a black that says return to the battlefield all creatures that were put into graveyards this turn. Now that's pretty much it for the deck tech, but the thing I really wanted to go through with you guys is the win condition. Something that I found with this deck that although we are really oppressing the entire board, we're controlling everybody's creatures, we're wiping the board multiple times, we're making sure that nobody has the chance to be able to take us out, it's almost impossible to be able to win with our creatures. We just don't have enough to be able to propel us into a winning game state, which is why I've included other win conditions in this deck. These next three are very similar to each other. They're essentially just cards that we can pump mana into to be able to wipe out our opponents. The first one is cut to ribbons with ribbons being able to drain our opponents. Extanguinate, which is also another effect like cut to ribbons that can drain all our opponents for their life. Torment of Hailfire for black black X repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non-land permanent or discards a card. And then lastly, I wanted to go through our infinite win condition, which what we what we need for this is nest of scarabs, Blowfly Infestation, and then either a Zulaport Cutthroat or a Blood Artist. Now the way this works is with Nest of Scarabs, it reads whenever you put one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create that many one one black insect creature token. And then Blowfly Infestation for two and a black, it's an enchantment. Whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, if it had a minus one minus one counter on it, put a minus one minus one counter on target creature. So this loop happens when we put a minus one minus one counter on a creature, it dies, it creates it creates a 1-1 black insect from Nest of Scarabs. Now the Blowfly infestation is going to trigger, causing us to put a minus one minus one counter on the black insect creature that we created with the Nest of Scarabs. And then it's going to die. It's going to trigger the Nest of Scarabs because we put a minus one minus one counter on something, creating another 1-1 black insect. And then there's going to be a trigger on Blowfly infestation again. Now this loop can be repeated multiple times, can be repeated infinite times, which means we can just bring creatures out, kill them, which allows us to draw our entire deck until we put a minus one minus one counter on something else. It also allows us if we have a blood artist out and not the scorpion god because remember we have to draw a card if a creature dies with scorpion god then we can just loop that infinite times and drain all of our opponents from their life guys this was a super fun deck to build it was an even more fun deck to play maybe people aren't going to like you so much if they play real hovery creatures because this deck is very oppressive it's very controlling but all around it is such a fun deck to play i hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech before i go i just wanted to let you guys know that our next duel of the peaks episode is going to be releasing next friday please tune in on that friday to be able to watch us play our tribal decks and have a great time doing so. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment on this video, and ring that bell to be notified of all of our new incoming videos. Thank you so much for tuning into this deck tech. I hope you guys have a great day. Stay safe out there. May you draw well. May you curve out. See ya.